Allah has given us a deen in which we have to take other people into consideration all the time. You have to be the best to your parents. You have to be the best to your spouse. Your children have rights over you. Your neighbor has rights over you. You have to say salam to your Muslim brother. So consideration for other people and being mindful of other people is a huge part of our deen. But there is a component of our deen in which you have to pretend nobody exists. Nobody matters. Not even my parents, not my loved ones. In fact, even my own personal feelings don't even matter. What is that one teaching? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Man ihtada fa inna ma yahtadi li nafsihi." Whoever is going to commit to guidance is only doing so for their own benefit. You see, we have to take a lot of social matters into consideration when we make any other decision, even if you leave Islam on the side. When you are going to consider, you know, for your son or your daughter, you're considering a proposal for marriage. You're looking at the family. You're looking at what this one's going to say, what that one's going to say. Are people going to raise a finger? What's our reputation going to be like? People consider social phenomena. What kind of gifts are we going to give? What kind of car should we get? What kind of neighborhood should we live in? What information should we tell people, not tell people? We're always thinking about the perception others are going to have of us. For some people, it plays a huge part in virtually every decision that they make. Sometimes you have to make a decision, and you think twice about what are my kids going to think, what is my wife going to think, what's the husband going to think, what are my parents going to think before I make this choice. Whether it's a financial decision, an education decision, any other kind of decision. But there's certain set of decisions in which Allah has expected you and me to do something. Allah has decreed that certain kind of money is haram, and you already know what it is. You don't need an exhaustive explanation on what kind of earnings are haram. Allah has already explained certain kinds of food is haram. Allah has already made clear certain kinds of actions are haram. Certain kinds of environments are not acceptable. They violate this deed. So you and I already know because the list of things that are prohibited is very small and is also very clear. There's no confusion about what's wrong in this deed. And everything that's wrong has been elaborated without any doubt. It's not complicated. And it's not complicated because this deed is supposed to be for all of humanity. So it's pretty straightforward. But sometimes our family, society, people's pressure, whatever it may be, other human beings start impacting our decision and we start bending our, our commitment to what is right because it will offend someone else. In those kinds of moments, the thing that Allah is teaching us, the mindset that Allah is teaching us is very powerful. I have to pretend that no one else is around. It's just me and Allah. And He expects me to live by certain kinds of guidance and I'm going to do this entirely for myself. When I obey Allah, it is entirely selfish. It has nothing to do with anyone else. No one's feelings matter. No one's anger matters. My own preferences don't matter. My culture doesn't matter. What country I come from doesn't matter. Somebody's going to think I'm loyal. Somebody's going to think I'm disloyal. None of that, all of that gets erased because it's just me and Allah. It's just me and Allah. That's the only reason I'm following this guidance. That doesn't mean that I get to be ruthless and inconsiderate to others. But no one gets to compromise what I know to be right and wrong with my Rabb. And if somebody wants to get upset with me, well and good. Let them be upset, my Rabb is not angry with me. My Rabb is not upset with me. A lot of times because we are now in a, a social media kind of environment, people are expressing their personal lives, they're broadcasting personal things about themselves like they've never done before. People want to publish what they're eating or what they felt that day or how they woke up or what they worked. They were, like nobody used to care or really be concerned with any of this, but now we need to broadcast virtually every part of our lives, lives to others, right? And in that broadcast kind of environment, there's a new kind of discussion that's taking place. There's a new kind of thought process that has emerged. And what is that thought process? I used to pray. I used to be good. I used to do this, this and this. But then, you know, these Muslims, they hurt my feelings. Or this community, they did this, this, this to me. Or these people talk to me in this way. And I don't want anything to do with these people. That's why I don't pray anymore. Or that's why I don't want to be anywhere around these people anymore. These people who act like they obey Allah, these women that are wearing hijab, or these people that have big long beards, I've seen what they're really like. I know what kind of criminals they are in business. And I know the kinds of cruelties they do in their family. They're a bunch of hypocrites. I don't want to even look like them. I don't want to be like them. I don't want to be associated with them. That's why I distance myself from any such practice that makes me look like I'm one of them. I belong in their gang. I don't want anything to do with them. I'm so turned off by their hypocrisy. I'm so turned off by their ignorance, you know, that I, I just want to disassociate myself with them. You see, in this thought process, there's a fundamental problem. You can hate somebody all you want. You can even have valid criticisms of people that pretend to be religious. All of that's fine. And in many cases, I might even agree with you. But that's not the point. Anything that our deen tells us, that Allah tells you to do, if somebody else made you feel good, or somebody else made you feel bad, it has nothing to do with you and your Rabb. 
Nothing. Man ihtada fa inna ma yahtadi li nafsi. Whoever followed and committed themselves to guidance did so for their own self. No one else ha- can be a part of your decision process. No one else. No scars from anyone else, no trauma from anyone else, no hurt feelings from anyone else. They don't matter because that's your relationship with another human being. This ayah is telling us that when it comes to Allah's guidance, my every decision that has to do with Allah's revelation, Allah's revelation has to be separated from what people say and do for better or for worse, out of resentment or out of love, doesn't matter. They don't get to be part of that equation. And then he says, وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا He reinforces it because of that person. Because of my brother, that's why I drink. Because of my uncle, that's why I do this, this, and this. There's a because of someone else, I disobey Allah. See that thought process? You get to point at somebody else and then justify not your relationship with them, but you get to justify your messed up relationship with Allah. And Allah removes this from the equation. Somebody wronged you, that's valid. You know what's not valid? That you as a result get to disobey your Rabb. And if whoever wants to be misled that way, wants to hide behind that excuse, whoever wants to do that, what do you imagine is going to happen on Judgment Day? That you're going to come in front of Allah and say, Ya Allah, yeah, I know I had a drinking problem, but it's my cousin's fault. You know what he did to me. That's why I'm this way. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's my mom's fault. It's my aunt's fault. It's my friend's fault. It's my company's fault. They did this to me. They pushed me into this. You think Allah is going to just take your sin off of your head and put it on them? That's how judgment day works. وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا And whoever has gone the wrong way, who's ever gone off the far end, they've only done so against their own selves. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى And no one that carries any burden. Listen to these words. I pray you and I internalize these words. No one that carries any burden is going to be carrying the burden of anyone else. There's young people in the audience today, I can tell you, if your parents never told you that you're responsible, if your parents never nagged you to pray or stay away from haram things and all that stuff, whether they do or not, whether you think that's annoying or not, whether they never said a single word to you, you're still responsible. Allah has made every human being intelligent enough, smart enough, capable enough to find the right way themselves. And when you're capable enough and smart enough, then you are held responsible. And what kind of hypocrisy is this? That the moment you turn 18 or even before, you want a driver's license. You're old enough and responsible enough to take other people's life in your hand on the road. You're responsible enough to stop at a red light and to not change lanes without looking and all of that stuff, you're responsible enough. But when it comes to Allah's guidance, he's just a kid. He's just so young. So the idea that we get to blame society, blame the day and age, blame technology, blame other people, blame religious scholars, blame corruption, blame confusion, blame, 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 blame. And the only one you don't want to take responsibility for is yourself. This is the lie that Allah crushes. He crushes this lie. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى No one that carries a burden, meaning every one of us are in fact carrying a burden, is going to be carrying the burden of anyone else. You'll get to blame your emotional state for your actions. I'll get to just say, Ya Allah, I was in a really bad place. That's why I was doing that. And that's why I'm still doing it. Ya Allah, astaghfirullah al Just one more drink. No. No, no, because it's her fault. This line of reasoning has to stop. This corrupt thinking is more dangerous than the sin itself. So he says, Notice how many times this notion has been reinforced. First he said, That would have been enough. Then he said, Whoever is lost, then they're lost on their own account. And they're only losing to their own peril. That's a second reinforcement. Then, Nobody who's carrying a burden will carry anybody else's burden. A third reinforcement. Why is he reinforcing this? By the way, the first statement means the same other two things. It's saying the same thing. If you really internalize the first statement, that your guidance depends on you. And you have to do so for your own benefit. Until you see that, then nothing else matters. That statement was enough. The other statements are reinforcement. Why does the Quran, full of wisdom, where there's no excess wording, why is it reinforcing? forcing so much because the thing that you and I overlook, the thing that I forget, that I tend to forget the most, Allah reinforces the most. The thing that's easily forgotten is the one that's hammered in more. That's why taqwa is talked about so much in the Quran. Over 200 times taqwa is being talked about. Why? Because you and I lose sight of it very quickly, right? So this is why this needs to be drilled in your head and mind. We enjoy a great deal of independence today that maybe the history of humanity has never seen. What what do I mean by that? Even if you're like living at home with your parents or with family and you're not financially independent, you have a device that gives you access to the entire world and to virtually anything. You're constantly in in a position to make whatever choice you want. 
with your mind, with your eyes, with your tongue, with your hands, you're, you're, you're able to make whatever choices you want. You have access to everything and choice is a huge responsibility, but it doesn't feel that way when you don't see the consequences of your choices. When you just say whatever you feel like, you type up whatever you feel like, you blurt out whatever you feel like, you browse whatever you feel like. You don't feel like there's any consequence to your choices. I don't feel like it because it's split second decision quick hit of the endorphins, right? You just get a quick hit, you get a quick, you know, dopamine high, then you move on to the next hit, right? And if we don't realize that this is going to lead this lead us down a very dark path, a very terrible path in which guidance will be taken away from us. If you pretend to be helpless, that's the last kind of, you know, trick in the shaitan's book on this. If you're done blaming everyone else for your own misguidance and, the, and you lost the, all the candidates you could blame, then you come back to yourself and say, this is just who I am. What can I do? This is just how Allah made me. I can't help myself. Really? You can't help yourself. Allah made you incapable of carrying a burden. Is that what you're saying? He called you a wazira. He called you someone who can carry a burden, but you decide to call yourself someone who cannot carry a burden. When he says, Allah does not burden anyone except they can hold it, they can carry it. Uh, he made me responsible. He made you responsible. If no one else ever told you that you are responsible, the fact that Allah revealed it is enough. And if we pretend we never heard about this and we never realized it and we never lived by it, you can live for pretend only so long until you have to stand in front of Allah and explain yourself. On judgment day, a person is being told to open up the record of their own life, everything they did. And Allah is telling this person, Iqra' kitabak, read your own book, read your own book. This is what you did. Kafa bi nafsika al-yawm, alayka hasiba. Today, you are enough as an accountant, as an auditor against yourself. You are enough as an auditor against yourself. That's what Allah is saying to every human being on judgment day that forgot this teaching, take guidance for your own self. Become selfish when it comes to guidance become scrupulous, uncompromising when it comes to Allah's guidance. It doesn't matter who gets hurt. It doesn't matter what pains you have to go through. It's worth the pain now. It's worth the energy exhaustion now. It's worth losing the friends now. It's worth being called the names now. It is not worth what you're going to be facing then. All the people whose loyalty makes you compromise Allah's guidance will be running away from you and me on judgment day. I don't want to be fooled by those kinds of loyalty. And all those people who I did not listen to, and I followed Allah's guidance, and they hated me for it, you might find that they're thanking me for it on Judgment Day. Thank you for not listening to me. Thank you for making me upset. Because if you hadn't done so, I would have been in deeper trouble. I would have been in deeper trouble. So I pray that Allah makes us deeply, internally, personally responsible. He removes from us the tendency to cast blame on everyone else for the way that we are before we put responsibility and blame on ourselves. And when we do blame ourselves, we don't become hopeless. We are still capable. We did not become paralyzed because of our past mistakes. We are still capable. If we were no good and there's no chance for you to redeem yourself, then there's no reason for Allah to keep you alive. There's no reason. The fact that you and I are breathing means Allah has given us an opportunity to redeem ourselves. The fact that we wake up this morning means Allah sees something good in us, the potential of good in us. Whether you want to realize it or not or declare yourself doomed, that's up to you. That lie is only to your own peril. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us real with ourselves and those around us. And may Allah make our commitment to His guidance sincere and pure. And may Allah Azza wa Jal help us live a life that embodies this beautiful ayah of the Quran.